up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Greetings from the Garden State. I'm your host, Mike Cam. We are here in Marlton, New Jersey. Marlton, New Jersey. Right. Uh, we're here with Phil Manganaro. Hello. Uh, he is the chef and owner at Park Place Cafe. Uh, so we're super excited. We're doing this one way different than we normally do. Uh, and there's a reason for that. We'll kind of get into it, you know, while we while we go along and, and all that kind of stuff, like why we're in the woods, you know. Uh, so... I think I said uh, powered by the New Jersey Lottery. If I didn't, shout out the lottery. So, Phil, talk to us about where we are and uh, why this place is significant for you personally. Uh, we are at a place called Camp Creek, Creek Run in Marlton, New Jersey. Uh, my friend Kira owns it. It's a nonprofit um, geared to get children back outside into nature. Um, she was kind enough to let us come here today and uh, walk the grounds. Uh, we're here today because uh, the restaurant that I, I, I run and own is primarily based on uh, foraging wild ingredients. That's cool. In the Garden State. Yeah, and so uh, Park Place Cafe is in what town? It's right uh, near The here. restaurant's in Merchantville, New Jersey. Okay. Um, All right. Which is right across the bridge from Philadelphia around Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Yeah. And I, I know you work back there by yourself uh, and you're only open like certain days of the week too, right? I'm open Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays because uh, we can get into it more if you'd like, but sure, it's yeah. to be a parent, um, which right. is very important to me. And being yeah. a chef and being in the restaurant industry, if anybody's done it, they know it's it's not easy. It's holidays. It's, yeah. So I, I took a chance, and I opened Park Place, and it all worked out. And then I said to myself, I only want to serve wild ingredients that I find myself. Yeah. And I took a chance on that, and so far that's all worked out. Sure. So I kind of just keep pushing it. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Well, let's let's start walking a little okay. bit. Okay. And, uh, you know, I'll, we'll kind of go talk as we talk as we walk. Um, and you're all, like, ready to rock and roll. Like, you got the camo on. <laughs> I tried to, like, I wore boots. I wore this green jacket. You know, so I tried to, like, fit the vibe myself. Yeah, this I got up in Maine. My son and I go up to Maine every year. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm not, I don't have time to hunt or anything. But sure. I do hunt mushrooms. I do hunt vegetables. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's more about cheap clothing more than anything yeah. because there's <laughs> certain days I come home covered in mud. Yeah. Um, from head to toe. It doesn't matter to me most times if it's raining. It doesn't matter if it's snowing, if it's 100 degrees outside, if it's humid, if it's any any weather I have to go out in. So yeah. whatever it's just going to be, I could throw it away and have no problem with sure. that. Sure, yeah, yeah. No, no issues. Um, so, you know, like, obviously, we were kind of talking in the car ride over here about you being a chef and how, like, when being a chef, people want to obviously talk to you about that. Um, but I do want to learn like a little bit about your background a little bit and kind of how you got into food and cooking and all that kind of stuff. So let's kind of take it back. Are you a Jersey guy? I was born and born and raised in, in South Jersey down here in Medford. And then I lived in Marlton where we are now, uh, moved out to Los Angeles for a little while. Okay. Went to culinary school in New York City, and now I've been back down here for quite a while. Okay. So, yeah, I, yeah. I love all of New Jersey. Sure. Um, I love South Jersey, and that's why I was really interested in doing this, because it's like there are so many cool things going on in New Jersey. Yeah. And the environment is one of them in the different soil types we have. We have the Pine Barrens. We have where we are now, which is on the edge of the Pine Barrens. We have the mountains up north. We have the coast. We yep. have an hour from here by Lake Princeton. We have clay soil. There's so many different ecosystems in this state. And I think it's special because you have different plants sure. growing in all those different ecosystems. Yeah. So it really benefits my lifestyle. Yeah. And talk to me about, uh, talk to me about a, a little bit about that too, because like, you know, this is not really like a normal, uh, like when people go to restaurants, it's not it's something that you see every day on menus and all that kind of stuff. So talk to me a little bit about like how you got interested and involved in this wild ingredient type of cooking and, and going out and picking this stuff yourself. Um, I got bored as a chef ordering a bag of lettuce and serving it, so to speak. Yeah. So then I found these companies 
that sell wild food. Oh, okay. The, those, the, you can buy it. Yeah. It's very expensive because it's the, the abundance isn't out there and the desire isn't out there. So you're paying a lot for it. So then in studying foraging and what grows here, I, I was finding it here. Yeah. And I said, well, why am I going to go spend $30 an hour, $30 a pound to buy this when I can go get it five minutes from my house? Yeah. And it almost became um, like an addiction to me, like the ultimate challenge, the ultimate, you know, hide and seek, the ultimate ingredient. Right. Because when you take something, even if you take an ingredient that's a wild ingredient that you bought and it was picked in Seattle. Yeah. It got picked, it got shipped, it sat, it could sit a day or two here. Everything I do, like, I talked to you earlier, I was picking wild mustard. Yeah. I just picked it. If I wasn't doing this today, I'd already be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but I'll go to the restaurant later and I'll preserve it. Okay. For the rest of the year. So it's the smells, the flavors, the textures that I'm getting to use as a chef by doing this. Yeah. Is I can't, I can't even buy it. And that's that what that's what became addicting to me. Sure. And the fact that I get to be outside, yeah. like a lot. Right. And when I say it's free, it's not free. Yeah. Because it's my time, it's my energy, it's of my course. effort, and it's it's anything but free. But yeah, that's that's pretty much what happened. Yeah. Was, was there anyone maybe like, and I don't know if this is true or or you know is a thing or not, but like anybody in particular that's that's also doing stuff like this that maybe you kind of. Uh, almost um, kind of like took some ideas from or anything like that or was just kind of just something like a self-start type of deal that you're just like this is what I want to do and here we go I've never worked for anybody that did it yeah I didn't even work for anybody that served wild ingredients um, if there is one thing that I'd seen on it yeah in my life it was an old collection of videos um, from Europe called The Art of Cuisine. Okay. And there was a guy in France, um, Chef uh, Michel Brasse, who would go out and and take things. Yeah. And, and use things. Um, but f for me, I don't, like, if I were to pick something right now, like, just don't talk for a minute. Yeah. That wasn't there, the, the subtle sound of the forest yeah. a month ago. And as a person, we go through winter time, and I don't, I don't get bored, but it's like you look at a plant and it comes up in the spring. It, it needs that winter to, to get the energy to come up in the spring. And I think a lot of times we look at winter as like this dead period. Mm -hmm. And it, it's almost tied the seasons for me together because it's like, what is winter for? Like, sure. And that's what it's for. It's for reflection. So now, now the the forest is alive again. Things are getting ready to pop out, and it's like, it almost. I'm digging in the ground. I'm digging in the soil. I'm smelling things. It's almost like. That's what it does to me every year. Yeah. It it gets in me and like I'm every year, I'm re like reborn. Reborn. Yeah, yeah I am. Yeah. And it's that's really reborn cool in the at. art, reborn in the craft, reborn in the dedication. I it's from right now until uh, Matsutake mushrooms in end of October, early November. Um it's every day. Yeah. It's days I, I'm not gonna lie. I <laughs> I don't want to go every day. I don't like going every day. Right. I'm not like oh, I'm reborn yeah. every day. <laughs> like but a phoenix. Yeah. At the overall, the reality you have to come to terms with is you are. Yeah. And just like that winter, those days where you don't want to do it, or or my ankle hurts, or I'd rather go hang out with a friend and I I don't because I'm I'm dedicated to this right now. That's all part of it. Yeah. And it, it requires that dedication anything in life does you sure. know it's not just this it's anything that you want to get that kind of pushback from you have to to dedicate like that so. yeah yeah um and so we were talking also you were talking also earlier about the fact that like um 
you know, Jersey and, you know, I feel like a lot of people sleep on the fact that Jersey has so many, you know, it's the Garden State for a reason, mm -hmm. you know, and it has so many, like, different climates, different plants, different soils and, like, all that kind of stuff. So can you talk to me a little bit about how, you know, you said uh, for the last few years you've been doing it this way and how this, uh, like, going through Jersey and kind of understanding the different, like, where everything's going to be growing, you know, and, like, knowing when to go pick it, when to give it a minute, you know, when to know that that rebirth is going to happen so you can kind of go and work with those uh, plants and different things. I, I've, I keep track of it all. Okay. Uh, in an old-school Excel spreadsheet, I keep track of everything I make, how much I make, um, how much I go through every year. Um... And then also, I mean, what I get by doing that is it follows the same list every year. You'll go pick A, and then you'll see B and C or next. Yeah. And then I I don't consider it foraging as much anymore. Okay. Um, because I'm not out there looking for things as, so much. I mean, the pine mushrooms, the matsutakis, I am because it's fun. Yeah. Uh, morels, it's fun. <laughs> Um, to go forage them. Yeah. Other than that, I, I look at it almost like wild farming. Okay. Um, I know where I have enough trees. I can go check on them any point of the year. I can see where they're at, and I pretty much know. I'm like, all right, next week. Sure, got to go That's what get. you're doing next week. Yeah. Um, but when I first started, yeah, I didn't know where the trees were. I didn't yeah. know where anything was. And also, I guess, like, early on, too, like, not really having... Not that you don't have any control because you kind of, you know, have a little bit of control of like what you actually pick, but it's not like you're planting the seeds yourself, right. kind of going through harvest and knowing what that schedule is. It's like you're kind of at the mercy of Mother Nature, so to speak. Like we just happen to get like a 70 degree day in mm -hmm. the middle of March, you know, which doesn't happen often. But then kind of knowing, you know, that's going to influence the dishes for that week, the next month. You know, if you're freezing and preserving stuff, you know, the whole year, the whole year. Yeah. Yeah. Some could have a bad year. I could be really into cooking with um, a berry. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I love this berry. And then it comes berry, that berry's time. And we maybe we got a bad storm when it was in flower. Maybe yeah. something wasn't right. And now I only got a handful of them berries. Well, that that's going to dictate what I cook. Sure. Um, it's going to take away from other ingredients. Now I got to get more of something else. Um, and as you can look at it two ways. Like, I look at it as the art. And that can either really challenge you and accelerate the art, or it can also limit the art. Yeah. Because I am limited, in a sense, because I'm only using what I pick and what I can pick and have time to pick and what grows. So yeah. I am limited in what I use. And that was a lot of it for me, because as a person, you have to be okay with that. Sure. And it's, it's hard. It was hard at first for me to be okay with that, yeah, you know, or right. to view it as an art. It was something I had to really work on myself, which is all part of why I did it. I yeah. mean, it's been the greatest personal challenge that I could have ever, ever given myself, and right. it still is every day. Yeah, and personal challenge, because I think we should address the fact that you know, like you pick everything yourself and in the kitchen you cook everything yourself yes. which also is a personal decision as well yes um so talk to me a little bit about that specifically and like you making that decision and why and then kind of how you know that influences your kind of connection to everything that kind of gets onto a plate at your restaurant I, I did it to see how much I could do with two hands, yeah. my two hands, in a certain period of my life where I wasn't um, professionally in a position to take the risk before, and I wasn't personally mature enough to take the risk before. And yeah. I think those two things came together at the same time. And it's almost like when those things happen in your head and your heart and your soul and you don't do it. Yeah. You start feeling like a fraud, so to speak, sure. because you're like, 
I could go do this. I want to go do this. I feel like this is what I should be doing, but I'm not doing it. Yeah. Um, so I think all of that that happened um, at the same time for me, and that's that's when I set out to do it. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I, and I to me, like I have a, a chef friend uh, who's also a James Beard nominee that he's like changing the way like the front of house and back of house system and like that whole process. And right. I love talking to people that just like aren't necessarily like in this is how it, this is how it's done this is just how we do it mm -hmm. you know and kind of like looking at it in a totally different way <clears throat> and changing things you know and i think that that's a really interesting thing because it's it goes well beyond just food you know yeah. like you could have a great plate of food but then also you know like you know kind of what went into that and in this case it's actually like walking through the woods and finding the stuff and getting it to your restaurant you know doing all the stuff to it and then getting it to somebody's plate eventually yeah and for me to finish on your other question i think oh yeah <laughs> or to fine. go on a tangent yeah one or the other we're tangenting um for me it's like you were saying like i could pick something today and i'm going to remember that it was a warm spring day i'm going to remember that the birds just came back and uh, i'm going to remember all these things and then I'm gonna make something out of that and it's gonna be preserved and I'm not gonna serve it until November. Yeah. Right? I'm gonna serve some today, I'm gonna hold some back, I'll do a little in July and then some in November, but then in November after how many months of my personal life has gone through, how many how many things and emotions and thoughts and feelings I've gone through in that time, I can take that out and I know I I know it was that seventy degree day. I know I had a great morning. I know all those things yeah. and that's the that's what's on my plate for me that's what i'm cooking with i'm cooking with memories of my life because yeah. getting this stuff is my life you know sure. it's 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 100 of it and it's on a plate now and it's like giving it to people yeah um, so yeah, no, I love that. We can keep going. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. No, I love you know get just getting. We were having a nature moment. Yeah, we were really having a nature you moment. Know, there's I love wrong it. with that. No. <laughs> and I love like usually if I go into the woods, like I'm staying on the paths that yeah. have the trail markers and everything. But I love that we're just like we're just going. Just going, you know. Yeah. Um, so, you know, kind of as we're going through this and, and people are learning more about, you know, you and the restaurant and kind of how it works, um, you know, like talk to me also about, so the restaurant's been open for, I think you said, uh, what was it, three and a half years? No, I'm going on eight years Eight now. years, eight yeah. years. Yeah, I've been doing the thing where I just forage everything, okay. except the proteins sure. because that's a whole nother. Yeah, that's a whole other thing. Risk factor and all. Um, so I obviously buy my proteins. Um, but yeah, the restaurant itself's going on eight years. Okay. And so, uh, talk to me a little bit about, you know, like starting the restaurant, uh, getting it off the ground and kind of putting your own stamp on the Jersey culinary world. And then we'll kind of get into like maybe some of the accolades, which I know is not always why you do it, but it is nice to at least mm -hmm. address it, you know? Uh, I worked for high volume restaurants the majority of my career. Yeah. Uh, for in Philadelphia and then even down in the Borgata. Um, oh, an, AC, an AC guy. Yeah, for yeah. nine months. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was it. That was it. Yeah. Um, and I went to get an executive chef position in. Philadelphia, and I pretty much had the job. But as I mentioned earlier, being a being a parent, being a father, is it's something that I, it doesn't matter. You can't replace that time. Yeah. With money. Sure. In my belief. So when I brought up this to the company that was going to hire me, it pretty much shut down the interview. I was right. like, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right. Yeah. So I left. About and family? I said, what are you kidding I me? I said, if I want to yeah. do this with my life, I said, I'm, I'm pretty much unemployable as I've known employment in the past. Yeah. I went on Craigslist. Um, where I'm at now popped up. I, I grew up around here. I was like, where is Merchantville? Yeah, right. <laughs> right? So I go, and I see it, and I'm like, all right. And I open the place um, out of pocket with, you know, the money I had left, and I just never looked back. Yeah. 
I'm very grateful for it. I'm, I have such a loyal following of, of regulars that have been coming, some of them for seven years. Yeah, um, which is incredible. That, and the that. place has changed. I mean, it's not like you've, I've said it, how it's changed over the years. Sure. You know? They've been there the whole time, the new people that come. Um, you know, they support it. Yeah. Um, but one thing that's been important for me is I don't try to please everyone. I'm pleasing myself. Yeah. In what I want to create and what I want to do. And if it ever gets to a point where my restaurant's empty because of that, then that's okay. Yeah. It's, it's fine. Um, because I think a lot of times we get caught up in trying to please everyone. Right. And everything. And... I think in doing that, what I've been able to do is make something very special of an offering to people and a very unique offering to people. Yeah. And I think that might be why you were saying I have gotten a, a fair amount of accolades yeah. for like, it. Well, talk to me a little bit about those and like kind of what, what are some that stand out for you personally? You know, because like we said before, I understand what you're talking about when it comes to like, you know, doing this for you and like putting your own two hands type of thing. Uh, but maybe like, what are some accolades that were like, wow, like I took that risk and now look at here we are. I was surprised. Um, I'm not surprised by it. I, I, I don't do it for that. Yeah. Um, I pride myself in being humble. Right. I, I pride myself in taking day by day. Um, I do believe if what I was doing, I was in Europe, or if I was in New York City, I, I would have more accolades. Sure. But, you know, I think we all... And it's a New Jersey podcast. I think all of us from New Jersey sometimes are like, it, it almost has this stereotype of like New Jersey. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> nah, it's New Jersey, man. Yeah. This is a beautiful state, has beautiful people, has beautiful areas, has, has beautiful cultures. And that's why I love, I love talking about New Jersey. It's my home. Yeah. It's, it's my, my home. It's where I was born. It's where I raised my son. It's, it's where I have my business. And if I can put word out that I'm doing this in New Jersey, you can do something in New Jersey. You're doing something in New Jersey. Yeah, right. If all of us that are doing something in New Jersey, and that's kind of what you're doing, yeah. is you're collecting us. Sure. And you're bringing it out. And I think it's it's great and it's positive for, for everyone. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's just been, I mean, just from my travels, you know, and I'm sure for you too, like knowing what's here and like what people kind of automatically think of when they think of New Jersey mm -hmm. and not knowing necessarily that there's like, you know, I mean, like, you're a James Beard nominee. Right. That is what I was going to you know? say was... And there's th other ones here. And there's, like, so many... Especially the food scene is crazy, mm -hmm. you know, in New Jersey. Like, that's... that's ins it, it's, And people are like, oh, no, you got to go into the city to get a good meal or go into Philly or whatever it is. You know what I mean? That is the one that surprised, surprised me the most yeah. accolade-wise, though, because I don't know how they necessarily found the place sure. or... Or anything like that. So that that is the one because, like, like I said, I do everything out of pocket. Um, I do everything at at my cost, I, at my risk. I have no investors, so to get that, yeah, and living that lifestyle is is great because sometimes it's hard. Like it, it's hard when everything you're running a business and a personal life and everything, and it's small. It's yeah. very small. Right. It's it gets hard some days having nobody else having no no there's no there's no investor I go to where I'm like hey man I gotta my yeah. I need new tires bro <laughs> yeah. like on my truck yeah <laughs> so it's it's stressful in its own way but yeah. I love working for myself and I love not having any of that so yeah all right so I think what we're gonna do just because I was looking at the time. Mm -hmm is this is where we usually like take a break. Okay. But we're gonna take a break and uh, just reset the cameras. This is usually where I put ads. So okay. we're in the middle of the woods mm -hmm. in Marlton, New Jersey with Chef Phil Manganaro. I'm Mike Ham. This is the Greetings with Say podcast powered by the New Jersey Lottery. We'll be right back. The Mayo Performing Arts Center is the heart of arts and entertainment in Morristown, New Jersey. MPAC presents over 200 events annually and is home to an innovative children's arts education program. To see MPAC's upcoming schedule of world-class concerts, stand-up comedy, family shows, and more, head to mayoarts.org or just click the link in our show notes. 
Hey folks, I want to tell you about the crew over at Make Cool Shit. These are the magicians who recently gave our podcast a jaw-dropping makeover. You know how we roll here at Greetings from the Garden State Podcast, right? We're all about that Garden State attitude. Well, Make Cool Shit shares that same vibe, and they've got something absolutely epic to offer. It's called the Unlimited Cool Shit Design Subscription. It's a game changer, my friends. Imagine this, unlimited creativity, one flat monthly fee, and none of that boring stuff. It's like having your very own army of design superheroes on speed dial. Whether you're a fresh race startup or a seasoned business looking to shake things up, the team at Make Cool Shit has got your back. It's all about making your brand sizzle no matter where you are in your journey. So if you're ready to turn your ideas into mind-blowing realities, then it's time to connect with Make Cool Shit. To check them out on Instagram at, at WeMakeCoolShit or visit their website, WeMakeCoolShit.co. Remember, that's co, not com. All right, we're back for segment two of this episode of Greetings from the Garden State, powered by the New Jersey Lottery. I'm Mike Cam. We're here in Marlton, New Jersey. We're doing a little bit different kind of episode today. Uh, we're with Phil Manganaro from Park Place Cafe, uh, and we're in the woods. Can you remind us where we are again? Uh, the, Marlton, New Jersey. No, no, uh, the Cam Creek Cam, Run. Cam Creek Run. And so uh, this is a place that you come out to to Wild Farm. Right? Yes, I do sometimes. sometimes. Yes, it's also a place that my I met the director Kira Giannotti here because my son was attending her nature program. Okay, and it was right away. I was like, yeah, he's got to go here. Yeah, you know, yeah, right. this is we're going. Yeah, you know. Um, and so I know we want to talk about like a couple different things in this in this last segment here, but um, one of the things that I was curious about, and obviously we can't really do it so much right now because there's not a lot blooming right now or growing um but uh like when you're out here did you do you have like a uh outdoor childhood like were you always outdoors like that kind of thing um talk to me like how you kind of got just comfortable being out here and like knowing what to look for and and all that kind of stuff i grew up around here yeah before it was you know really built up um, and we used to just ride our bikes in the woods for 12 hours in yeah. the summer, you know? Right. <laughs> you know, and just be kids. Um, I don't necessarily, I love being outdoors and I love nature and I love, love it all. I don't, sometimes I don't love it though. Um, because a lot of what I do has become such work. Yeah. And, but that's, I always remind myself of how lucky I am and blessed I am to, that my work is kneeling here and picking something or kneeling there and listening to a bird or yeah. feeling the temperatures. Um, definitely, and you can ask anyone, I do not like bugs. <laughs> I don't think anyone really <laughs> Any likes kind bugs. Of bug, yeah, I will right. scream. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, comfortable, I, I just. It's just what I feel like I'm supposed to be doing right yeah. now. It's I don't think when you reach a point with something in your life, you just the best thing is to not question it. Like right. if I'm supposed to be having this faith in what I'm doing, yeah. You can't question that then. You do it. You you see it through and you go with it, you right. know? And anybody that does anything, they're going to they're going to have days where they're like, "Uh-uh." Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like not today. But that's a test yeah. of sure. why are we doing what we're doing, you know? And I feel like especially too when you're doing something like I do this on my own. Mm -hmm. You know, you do this on your own. I think like that could just be like uh, in some days, like, wow, like, this is incredible. And then other days, like, wow, this sucks, <laughs> you know, oh, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, so, like, while we're out here and we're kind of, like, looking at stuff, like, do you know, I mean, you know now, but know, like, what to look for when we're like, out this here? this is one of my favorite things that's probably, like, a month away. It's called Greenbrier. Okay. Um, you see how it's real thorny. Yeah. And it's funny, you asked me earlier, like, we used to say every word available to mankind, to yeah. Kirsties, riding our bikes through the woods because they will shred you to pieces. Yeah. I didn't know back then, you know, I wasn't, I was not raised with any of this. I was not culinarily trained with any of this, any of it. Yeah. So, but in about a month, they'd, they'd shoot out a tip, almost like asparagus, and they'll have, they'll have the thorn on this new tip, but the yeah. thorn's edible. Interesting. Because it's soft. Because these, what Greenbrier does is it tries to find another one. Or it tries to get over to that tree and wrap around and grow up. It's always trying to grow up, you know? Sure. And you just snap them off like asparagus almost. And then it, it grows another one. And then eventually the plant tells itself, 
it's time to get hard for the year. Yeah. And then that's when the season ends. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, this is one of my by far favorite um, things. I mean, this is native to here. There's a lot of, there's native and invasive and all this stuff. This is native to here. Sure. Um, so that makes it for me, it's even more special. Um, to use, um, but it's important to use the invasive stuff too because that the mustard that I'm picking right now, if that came here, doesn't belong here. Right. Um, and it would take over because most of the invasives reproduce at such a rate that they will drown out the native species. That's one thing Kira does here is she keeps it native. Okay. Um, she does work to keep it native. Um, so it's 50 you're, acres, which is yeah. A you're task looking sure. at yeah. You know a pretty majority of what this ecosystem here is supposed to look like. Yeah, that's really interesting. And it's just so funny that we also just stopped at a place that has something that you can talk about, like mm -hmm. how serendipitous. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, so, I mean, I use, I use pine, okay. pine trees. I mean, you know, there, there's so many. Yeah, there, I was going to say, are there things, I mean, pine trees would be one. I but. mean, the next time I'm on. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so many, there's medicinal qualities to all these things. I mean, pine needles are so high in vitamin C right. that you can use it in the wintertime. I'll cook with pine. We have white pine here and pitch pine here. Yeah. Um, I always refer to the one as being more feminine, the white pine, and the other one more masculine in okay. flavor. Gotcha. Um, I use that. It's a wine descriptor also that people use about wine. Yeah which I've learned a fair amount at the restaurant about. And I'll cook with that chard, I'll steep it in things. Um, I'll burn the pine needles to make an ash that I use. Yeah. Um, one of my, in, you know, the, the Matsutake mushrooms I get at the end of the fall are like my, I love going for these things. It's like 70 miles of walking in like a couple weeks and it's yeah. out in the middle of nowhere, extreme South Jersey, maybe, <laughs> could be North Jersey. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, and, I do that with venison and then the pines and it's like, it's almost like you can start, you know, cause the deer eat these mushrooms and they grow in the pines and it's almost like when you use these ingredients and you start experimenting with them, you can almost cook that. It, that's a situation in nature that's now a dish. Sure. Um, you can, I can buy a, a ramp from a purveyor. Yeah. I can't buy a late season ramp with a bulb the size of a of a quarter. Right. I can go get that though. Yeah. Um so Yeah, they're like I mean pine needles wouldn't be something that like I necessarily would think of. Mm -hmm. Um but there are other things that like people listening to this be like, oh my God, like I see that all the time or like I didn't even know that. I mean, I can... I'm sure ramps, I mean we there's not I mean truffles are very unique to where they grow. Yeah. There's nothing that you're gonna see from a wild food perspective on any menu that you cannot find in New Jersey. Okay. Um, one thing that I'm really got into and love, and I do it, I go up to Maine too every year, so I love New Jersey. Most of the stuff comes from New Jersey, but yeah. I always say that my, my cuisine is the terroir of my life. Okay. So now when I go to, to Maine every year with my son. That that's my life. Yeah. That so that's part of my terroir of my life. And I love the seaweeds up there because they don't grow down here. Sure. Um that's I'll really bring back yeah. I'll bring back water. I make salt from up there. Yep. But adversely I, New Jersey has like I love sea lettuce. It has the most beautiful sea lettuce that I've ever seen up and down the whole coast. I mean it's yeah. so delicate, it's so green, it's so vibrant. So I'll go down and I get that or I'll dry it and then you know I'll do a, a nice you know, like a risotto with seafood in it, and then yeah. the dehydrated sea lettuce powder, I call it, on right. top. And it's like some of these seaweeds, you'll, I dehydrate them. Yeah. And you, I do it through a tea strainer, and it goes on the, on the hot, like risotto, we'll say. Yeah. And it's, you like right back on the coast of Maine, or you're right on the coast for me. Yeah. You know, right. I, yeah. And it's that smell and that freshness that I'm sure. The diner is, okay, they yeah. don't, you know, I'm with my son. I'm on, like I said earlier, it's my life that yeah. I'm seeing. Right. Um, 
but the, the, the coast is something that I've gotten. So just as a person, it's ever changing, it's ever evolving. It never changes though. Right. It can have very calm days. It can have very rough days. It can have, it's, it's, so the coast for me is like, to be able to cook and to be able, I, it was not, you know, it's, am I going to really go forage seaweed? And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be like that guy on the but, beach, like pulling seaweed. In. Yeah. In Japan or out West sure. or in Maine, even you can take 50 pounds of seaweed a day in Maine. Yeah. And so just because something's not necessarily exactly like, am I going to be the guy on the beach in New Jersey? Like, <laughs> oh, oh, my God. God. oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> sea lettuce. <laughs> yeah. I am going to be that guy. Yeah. Absolutely. I am. Sure. And I think. It, uh, one thing like foraging I think sometimes it's like some some there's two camps or three camps or ten camps some people say you shouldn't do it yeah some people say it's you shouldn't you're disrupting this or you're disrupting that I believe that this is here for us and I I use it and I take it and I study it and in that I respect it more than more than anyone um, that it's not, that I, uh, there's a whole industry based around foraging. Yeah. Um, I use this as an example and that'll make the point that I just didn't make. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> the Matsutake mushrooms that I find. Okay. Commercial foragers will go into the woods with a team of, of people, 50 people, all right. with rakes. Yeah. Rake, 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 take the mushrooms, leave. You just could have destroyed the mushroom population there forever. Sure. And anything I, else that's growing in like I that. I go. Yeah. I, I, it's all by hand. Um, I take the mushroom and I put it back. I put it back. You would never even know I'm there because my lifestyle that I've chosen to live, which is this, and sure. my livelihood, and it depends on me being able to go back next year. I'm not going to go in if it's seaweed, if it's this, if it's a ramp, if it's... I'm not going to go in and clear it out because then what am I doing next yeah. year? I'm going to have nothing. <laughs> Eventually, I'm going to have nothing. So yeah. I do it in such a respectful manner. I take, I take only exactly what I need, and, yeah, I sell it yeah. as a... Uh, food on a plate sure Ab well, absolutely i make yeah. money off of it right like yeah especially when we when we're talking about the alternative yeah. before which like buying everything it's still happening you and know? i i know what i'm serving people and i only use you know like a grass-fed meat no hormones from the meat perspective sure all my other stuff in my restaurant is, like you said earlier, it's grown by the chance of the sun, the yep. chance of the rain, the chance of the seed being dropped by the bird over here. It's so organic and so fresh and so... I know I can give this to people, and I'm like, I, I know I'm feeding people good. Yeah. I'm, you know? Right. So yeah. that has a lot to do with it, too, too for me. And that it, I'm glad I brought that up because the commercial foraging industry is, it's, it's not an industry that I necessarily agree with. And sure. sometimes it's like, well, you're making money off of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow. Yeah, right. I mean, it's just like, it's all relative, too. Yeah. You know, like, commercial foraging, you foraging, like, like all that kind of stuff, I think is, you know, it's all relative, like I said before. Um, so as we're kind of talking about, I know you've mentioned the Matsutake mushrooms, mm -hmm. which does re uh, make me remember that we want to talk about uh, the movie that you have coming out right. eventually, mm -hmm. uh, which is called The King of Matsutake Ridge, right? It is, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, found. Found. The King yes. of Matsutake Ridge. Yeah. Not to correct you for found, but for me it was... Oh, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, originally it was just found, and I like that because, like, this has been a found way of life for me. This has been a found lifestyle for me. This is, it's it's all been found. The food is found. Yeah. And then uh, it was customers that I, I made the movie with right. originally. It was, they came back, and we talked, and we talked, and we were like, yeah, we'll make, like, a five-minute thing, seven-minute thing. Yeah. And then... You know, we it, it got going into something, and they put a lot more time and effort into it than I had hired for, yeah. because I think right. they were like, this is a story that we're going to tell, yeah. and we're going to put time and effort into it. Sure. Like, when um, you start to dig a little bit, you're like, Like, oh. for me, I was yeah. like, all right, let's release it and uh, charge 99 cents to watch it, and I make my money back. But sure. then it was like... 
well, we can enter this into film festivals because it's a short doc. It's like 33 minutes long. And I was yeah. like, absolutely, let's enter into film festivals. Yeah. Who I, I never thought totally. in my life I'd have something in a film festival, you know? Yeah. Let alone getting like finalist and this and that and the other things. So and as I told you earlier, we just found out that we are, you know, in the, the, the I forget the official term, but at the International Film Festival in New Jersey. Yeah. The one that they do in Asbury Park, the Garden State. No, nah, New Brunswick. Oh New Brunswick, okay. It was um we're getting screened out of 709 entrants. We yeah. were like one of 5% of people that get screened. So wow. it, it can't be released till all those processes are over. Sure, yeah. And I think when you, even with the food, like I never think about it. I never go back. I never ponder it. My menu changes, if not every day, a couple times a day per tables. Yeah. Um, I think the hardest thing with art for me, well, this way. Yeah. You just have to let it go. Right. You have to let it go. It's going to do its own thing. I'm there to get it to a point where it's on a circle plate. Yeah. After that, it's just, it's up to interpretation. It's up to this. It's up to that. You just have to let it go. Sure. And as a person, be okay with that, you know? Yeah. I mean, like so, different tastes, different everything. Even, but yeah. the, even with the movie, like it's it come out when it comes out, I guess now, you know? Right. I would love to get it out. I would love for people to see it. I'd love to share it with people, but... Yeah. Not forcing things is, is it's not an easy thing to do in life to have patience. One of the things that <laughs> this, not, one yeah. of the things that I, I, my whole life, I, I, you should, most impatient person you ever meet. Yeah. Over the last three, four, five years, but I knew that was my issue. You know, I was right. like, you gotta have patience. You gotta, so like, in seeing this through, and having the patience and belief to see it through. I, I've learned a lot. So for me, this whole thing is about, as a person, learning a lot. Right. Yes, I'm cooking. Yes, I'm picking food. But for me, that's what it's truly about. Yeah. Yeah, and so maybe let's talk a little bit, too, about... Oh, so this is what I wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. So we're here, and this is what I was saying before. Mm -hmm. We were in a tree, and there's berries in the tree. You're not taking these. No, those are holly. They'll, so those you don't want to eat. Yeah, they'll poison you, right? Well, yes. I, I don't... Those. That's something I don't know okay. specifics about. Sure. I know you don't eat them. Yeah. That's all I... <laughs> that's a start that's and stop right there. Like, I don't know yeah. if it's going to make your stomach hurt. I yeah. don't know if it's going to give you a fever. Um but yeah, that's a no. Yeah, that's a that's a hard no. Was there, was there any trial by error early on? No, no, no. I remember the first thing I tried was actually here at camp was something called Mullen. Okay. Which is um, it's medicinal. It's a natural ex expoterant or oh. whatever. Oh. Oh. Is. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, yeah. I remember we did it in a tea and we drank. I knew what it was, hundred percent. Yeah. You know. Now I drink it every day. Yeah. Um, First time though, it's like you drink it and then like you're sitting there and you're like, all right, my arms are getting hot. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah, what's happening? No, that today? was it. Uh, no, yeah. it's you have to study it. You have to know. Um, and I have never served anything to anyone in my restaurant that I haven't consumed sure. multiple times first. Um, these aren't ingredients. Some of them are ingredients that you can't buy. Yeah. Um, those I make sure. And then there are some risky ingredients that I don't even use. Right. Because I have 80-year-old people come to my restaurant. Wow. Yeah. What do I need to take a chance for on somebody else like that? Right. Like, you know, and that that's, I have my own very conscious, very um, mature limits on what I actually do. do. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I wanted to just hit the movie. Just We just, I just want to talk about mm -hmm. that real fast just because we're standing here. Um, why do you think the movie is getting the kind of reception that it is? Uh, I mean, obviously it's well done, everything like that, but the story itself, like talk to me a little bit about why that's such a good story that people need to hear. If they're, if they're not like already like, this episode was great and um, <laughs> we know why. I would why. say it's just really honest and really positive. Yeah. It's not, and that that's what it is. To tell you, it's just an honest, positive story about why I truly do this is to be a parent yeah. to my son and to 
to explore myself more like the woods to like, like uh, you know on a weird analogy like I'm sure. foraging within my own emotions and feelings yeah. as a 44 year old man sure <laughs> yeah yeah you know what I'm saying yeah like, it doesn't happen often. I'm not yeah. and I'm not shy to talk about it like because right. everybody that's gonna watch this has had a day where they're just like oh my gosh yeah or they've had a day where they're they're on top of the world we're all just people and if me doing this or this movie or, or the food that I make can maybe only touch one person on the road. Maybe I do a thousand interviews right. over my span and I touch one person in that time yeah. and that makes the difference in their life. Then you have to be open. You have to be okay with yourself to be like, yeah, I'm, some days I'm <laughs> yeah. not having the best day, sure. you know, but I still believe and go forward on, on this life that I've... I've set forth on. Even if the restaurant closes, even if uh, the movie does nothing, yeah. I'm still on this road. I'll, you'll still be able to come out here, and I don't know what I'll be doing with the food. Yeah, I'll still be out here though. Yeah, I'll still be picking it, and right. doing, even if I just eat it, you know, it's yeah. it's a way of life. I found a way of life, and I I think that's why. Yeah, because it's it's nice to see. Right. And anyone, even I had to step out. So, said I'm very humble that we premiered it we have one private screening at a yeah. movie theater I'm not walking in like oh I'm on a movie screen you know what I mean I'm like the king. big screen baby <laughs> even though yeah you know it was I'm sure it was like pretty I, cool to, to see separate it, it yeah. was but yeah you know listening to yourself talk for 30 minutes kind of it's like all right all right this guy needs to Dude, stop talking I totally already. get it yeah yeah so <laughs> but even in that how much should I have to come to terms with in my own self right. to get to a point where it's like, I know I'm okay seeing this. I know I'm a humble person doing this. Yeah. I know it's not about this. I know it's not about negativity. I know it's about positivity. You know, it's, I started looking at everything as a, a teaching lesson right. in life yeah. and to be a better version of the self every day. Yeah. You know? So, uh, before we get like wrapped up here mm -hmm. and we kind of tell people, excuse me, <coughs> Bless you. Ooh, nature. Um, <laughs> if we get wrapped up here and kind of like get everyone, uh, like where they should go to learn more about the movie, the restaurant and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, obviously like this is, like you said before, like this is kind of a personal choice that you've made to kind of live your life this way, both at the restaurant and both out here, um, to be a dad, to be all that kind of stuff. But almost like, like this is really just like a really unique, we've had a ton of chefs uh -huh. on the show. This is the most unique episode we've done with the yeah. chef so far. Um, probably one of the most unique episodes we've done, period, because of the way we filmed it, the way, you know, we did this whole story and everything. But uh, almost kind of like uh, a message, almost, to the people that are listening. Like, obviously, like, we wanted them to come try the food and experience it and kind of experience it through your eyes and your hands and your plates and stuff like that. Um, but almost kind of like that way of life we've touched on it like a couple times like you know being in nature hearing the birds like that rebirth type of thing mm -hmm. um but anything that you want to like leave the people with before we wrap this up not really okay i would just say yeah. what i've said yeah. you know i think it's more than a it's more than just a boom 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 statement i sure. think it's a just I, I, it's not, I just, I said it's not easy. I yeah. said I have bad days. I do it. Yeah. If there's something that somebody sees this and they, it's like I, I asked you earlier, like, you know, when you've went to this full time, yeah. things, sometimes you, you're not thinking maybe I should go do this for no reason. Just go do it. Yeah. Like I can, you can always go back if right. you need to, but going forward is a beautiful experience. Yeah. And so like, do you have, this is my last question before yeah. we wrap it up, but do you have anything that you're kind of looking at? Because obviously like this was a risk, so to speak. I forgot I should point the camera at myself too, um, <laughs> but I've been doing great. My arms are good. You have. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, people that are, you know, doing this and, or you're doing this and you took a risk essentially to mm -hmm. like open up your own place and then took another risk to do everything all yourself and then kind of come out here and, and do the wild farming and everything. Um, are there like other things that you're looking like, oh, I'd like to get to like this point too, or try this other new thing. Like, are you thinking about that consciously or just kind of going about taking it day by day and seeing what comes next? I kind of let it go. Yeah. There, it has an end to what I'm doing right now, working sure. alone and picking alone. It's, I, I have 
has an end. Um, I'll always cook, I always want to forage or wild farm, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, I, I don't, I'm there, that's where I'm at in my life, at the what is next. Right. And talking more and more honestly every time about it and relating it to life is what I think somehow is next. Yeah. I haven't figured that out yet and I believe eventually it's, it, if you keep doing something, that's what opens up to you. Yeah. If you know, so if I keep doing that and I keep getting more comfortable in it and there's a reaction to it, then something's going to open up and I just, I just, you know, going to go that direction. Yeah. Um, yeah. And keep going on because it all stems back from the first day where I said, I'm going to do this. Right. But this is part of that, you know, this yeah. conversation yeah. all goes back to that. So sure. Yeah. Just going to keep on it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this was awesome. And I'm glad we did it this way and we didn't do like yeah, a sit too. down and walk around, you know, because <laughs> nah. uh, this is just like way cooler. And we yeah. got to like walk around a little bit, you know, see parts of the Garden State that a lot of people either don't realize exists or don't get down to enough. So uh, I appreciate you I taking appreciate me out you taking, today. Taking me out. Yeah. So if people are listening to this and they're like, I need to. I need to experience this. <clears throat> Where would you send people to go to do that? <laughs> <laughs> um, they can go on uh, Park Place. I think it's NJ Park Place underscore something like that on yeah. the Instagram. Okay. Um, but we are um, we're, we're real small. Yeah. Uh, have a lot of regulars, so it is not an easy res it's to a get. Feet. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but you never know. Yeah. You know, we do get new people in. We get cancellations. But, yeah, we, we book out from long time to sure. advance. Sure. So make your reservations. Or find somebody that already has a reservation. Yeah, and buy it from them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, but, yeah. yeah, and then the uh, the documentary or the website, you can go to Park Place. <coughs> I have a website, and you can sign up for movie alerts cool. or, or stuff like that. So yeah. it's all, all be on the website. I don't know it off the top of my head. Yeah, it's fine. I tell we'll, not to <coughs> about it. We'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, that'd just go be and click great. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then when we start promoting the episode and stuff like that, then we'll, we'll make sure we put all that stuff on there but um again this has been awesome oh yeah thanks. and i really appreciate you having me down and taking me out and doing this episode with us and uh i'm gonna have to book a reservation now for next year so um but uh thank you again again this has been the greetings from the garden state podcast we were here in marlton new jersey at camp creek run run uh with F phil manganaro of park place cafe which is in Remind me. Merchantville. Merchantville. Thank you. Sorry. There's a lot of Worries. things. And like I'm, I'm walking around. I'm. You it's know. the birds. Yeah. It's the, the birds. birds. Yeah. I'm, I'm just kind just of like lost in my own take thing. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll put all of Phil's uh, stuff in the show notes, uh, so you can just go click it, go check it out, try to get a reservation if you can, because uh, I know I will. And then Walt's book greetings from the Garden State .com in the show notes as well, so you can just go click that, uh, and you'll get to all of our other great episodes that we've been we've been releasing this year because this year's episode crop has been awful the charts just like literally like one after another have been incredible uh so thank you for listening again greetings we are to say podcast powered by the new jersey lottery i'm mike ham he was phil manganaro thank you for listening we'll catch you next time